Or, we ready to shoot? Today on Engineering Newswire, we're delivering packages with a self-driving robot using a 300-foot-long monster machine to build Chinese viaducts, and we're gonna save dying artificial organs with 3D prints that were inspired by, believe it or not, pastry chefs. Delectable treats. <laughs> Skype co-founders have announced the launch of a new company, Starship Technologies, to help improve the local delivery of goods and groceries. And making it virtually free with the help of robots, of course. The company plans on introducing fleets of the small delivery bots which would be capable of carrying the equivalent of two grocery bags. Which isn't really that impressive. I mean, I can carry at least five on one arm at a time. However, these robots are free from CO2 emissions and, according to the company, open up new opportunities for businesses such as parcel delivery firms or grocery stores. The robots themselves are designed using off-the-shelf components, are lightweight, and drive autonomously 99% of the time. The last 1% accounts for human intervention to ensure safe operation. Nobody wants a rogue robot running off with the bread and milk. Starship Technologies is currently testing and demonstrating prototypes and plans to launch the first pilot services in cooperation with its service partners in the US, UK, and other countries in 2016. Although I'm not optimistic about the technology's future in the US. Anybody remember the Hitchbot? <laughs> not good. A 300-foot-long monster machine is being used to build entire bridges and viaducts in China. The contraption, called the Segmental Bridge Launching Machine, or SLJ-932, acts almost like a snake to connect viaduct segments. It was built by the Beijing Wall Joint Machinery Company and is made up of 64 wheels split up into four sections of 16 wheels each. Each section can also rotate 90 degrees so that the entire machine can drive horizontally. To build the structure, the machine must pick up a new beam from the casting yard and then drive it to the site of the viaduct, where pillars are have already been erected. From there it lowers the pneumatic support structure which helps stabilize the machine as it extends itself to the first pillar. After the track is stabilized, the machine pulls itself out with a new segment. When the machine is fully extended with the track, it lowers the new viaduct segment in place for the crew workers to begin their work. The process can be repeated over and over once each new segment is secured. China is currently using these machines mostly for building high-speed rail viaducts, and maybe someday in the US we might be able to say goodbye to unstable cranes too. Using a technique inspired by the intricate sugar glass cages crafted by pastry chefs, a team of bioengineers at Rice University and surgeons at the University of Pennsylvania have taken sugar, silicone, and a 3D printer to create an implant with an intricate network of blood vessels. The work could solve one of the biggest challenges in regenerative medicine. How do you deliver oxygen and nutrients to an artificial organ before it starts to die? When engineering large artificial tissues, such as livers or kidneys, tissue engineers have typically relied on the body's own ability to grow blood vessels. The process is slow, and cells deep inside the constructs often die from a lack of oxygen before the blood vessels ever reach them. The team developed a proof-of-concept construct, a small silicone gel, no bigger than a gummy bear, using an open-source 3D printer. Using the 3D printer to lay down the individual filaments of sugar glass one layer at a time, they then printed a lattice of would-be blood vessels. Once the sugar hardened, they placed it in a mold and poured in silicone gel. After the gel cured, the team dissolved the sugar, leaving behind a network of one millimeter in smaller channels in the silicone. Surgeons then connected that gel to a major artery in a small animal model and found that it could actually remain open and unobstructed for up to three hours. This study is a first step toward developing a transplant model where the surgeon can directly connect arteries to an engineered tissue. That's it. No punchline after that one. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manti and this has been your Engineering Newswire. Get back to this.